Welcome to episode three of Project Electrolyte, the battery episode. This is the 1972 Plymouth Satellite Tesla swap. I think Tesla got it right when they used the 18650 cell. Here is a early laptop battery. We've probably all used one of these. Had a, a stack of cells in it. Or a portable phone charger. Just a single cell can recharge your phone. Their nominal voltage, about four volts. If you need more demand, you can add cells. Here's a Milwaukee battery. Voltage is up to 18 volts with uh, more capacity. And then if you want to have fun, you put it in a scooter. Why not? We all have seen these around the cities. This one has the dual batteries, so a little over 20 mile range, 15 mile an hour scooter, up to 18. And my favorite, the electric unicycle, that King song on the left. 84 volts, 120 cells, 30 miles an hour, over 50 mile range. But of course the undisputed king is Tesla. They've uh, upgraded their batteries uh, constantly from a 60 kilowatt hour up to the 85, the 90, the 100, and uh, they keep getting better. The 100 kilowatt hour pack would be the best pack I think I could use and thanks to Stealth EV and Matt Haber he found one for me and I couldn't refuse so it is uh, on the way to my project should uh, give the Plymouth well over 200 miles of range and uh, a lot more amperage than the uh, the older packs it'll it can put out over 1700 amps for a short time here they are all boxed up individual modules each module, about 24 volts. It's a 6S86P for the battery geeks. You add them all up, you have 8,256 individual lithium ion cells. Here's a close up look how they're connected. You can see each uh, cell individually uh, linked with a little fuse wire. That way, if one of the 18650s goes bad, it'll blow or a catastrophic incident. Um, you could blow them all, but you would save the rest of the car. This is how batteries were uh, installed in the Tesla. They're the floor of the car. 14 flat, two stacked in the front. Uh, but that's not going to work in my car, so back to CAD we go. Here's a file I got from GrabCAD. The dimensions look pretty good, so I've started to uh, design a box for them. It looks like a stack of six uh, actually, two stacks of six side by side will fit under the hood where the engine was. And so I'm going to build a box with shelves that will support the battery on its existing rail. These shelves will be mounted to the side walls of the box and the uh, divider in the middle of the box. As I stack them up, the shelf will also hold them down uh, so they're very solid in place. And then uh, on up we go, we'll just stack them up. This is uh, 17, 7 16ths aluminum, it'll be all CNC cut, and uh, the sides will be cut as well, so they'll all be uh, located just perfectly. Here's two of them stacked up, you can see a little 16th of an inch gap in between, so each module is supported individually on its own rails. Then they'll be connected in series, you can see the left lug is negative, the right is positive, and they'll just kind of crisscross up and uh, until we get all of them in series. To install them, the uh, bus bar will be attached to the lower s module, and then the upper module will slide in uh, underneath that bar to make the connection. So starting at the bottom, working my way up to the top, connect them all in, and then I'll put a, uh, a stopper on the back and the front so they can't slide forward or back in the box. So here's what a stack of 12 would look like in the box. The three sides, the two sides in the middle, those will all be welded solid and then I'll uh, just bolt on the front, the back, and the top. The only thing coming out of the box will be the uh, wiring and then some coolant lines. Each of these, uh, this is the 100 kilowatt cell, has two coolant loops per, per module instead of uh, the earlier modules only had a single. So there's parallel flow to each of the loops all the way throughout the car. Each box will have its own manifold. So here's the manifold showing all the connections, four connections per module, and then uh, parallel flow in and out. Here's a completed box for under the hood. This holds 12 of the modules. I'll have another four in the trunk and just a single wide box. 
but it'll be the same idea, all watertight. So it'll keep the battery modules uh, in good shape for a long time. This will fit right where the engine was. It'll kind of be uh, skewed to the right a little bit to give room to the steering, and then it'll just be mounted on top of the K-member exactly the way the engine was. I've special ordered this from Gerst Suspension, and uh, it won't have any motor mounts. That way I can build my own battery box mounts. Uh, he thought it was a pretty interesting project, so I think uh, he'll enjoy working on it with me. If you're enjoying this project, feel free to subscribe. You can ring the bell if you want notifications when I make a new video. And if you have any comments, questions, or otherwise, please leave them below. Thanks a lot.